Hello again, my name is David Watts from Lenovo Press, and today we're going to be talking about the new Think System SR635. And I have with me today Russ Resnick. Russ is the worldwide segment manager for one and two socket servers. How are you doing, Russ? Great. How are you today, David? Very good. Very good. Good. So, Russ, um, we have this new this new um, AMD server. Mm -hmm. Why is Lenovo bringing into market uh, this general purpose um, AMD server? Why now? That's a great question, David. Um, we've been working with AMD and customers in the past, and uh, what we found is that this new generation of AMD CPU uh, is really well suited for general purpose workloads. So we thought it was the right time to bring a AMD 7002 series uh, CPU system to market. Yep, and um, that we already have a, a few uh, single, uh, sorry, uh, one new servers mm -hmm. in our portfolio. Um, where does this one fit in? So this is a one U one socket server. And you may ask, you know, it's a one socket. Why isn't mm -hmm. it a 200 series? You know, what's so special about this being a one socket server? Yeah. Well, the real answer here is that this one socket server really has the capability that's beyond some of our two socket servers that are already in market. Yeah, okay. I mean, the, the advantages we're going to go through shortly include mm -hmm. um, additional PCIe lanes, mm -hmm. um, uh, additional call counts. That's right. What sort of, um, what sort of applications would benefit from this type of system? Well, given the high core counts of this series of CPU and the high number of PCI lanes, we find that um, workloads that are really geared for high core counts like virtualization and VDI are a good fit. And then because of the large number of PCIe lanes, we find that uh, uh, workloads that use lots of I.O. count like uh, networking uh, appliances that do deep packet inspection or uh, software-defined storage that relies heavily on NVMe devices really work well on a server like this. Yep, great. Okay, so let's go through each of the um, each of the components in the server. We actually have two of the systems here. Um, there are different different configurations, and so we'll show you uh, bits from each of the servers as we go through. Um, the key thing to start with, of course, is the the new. Um, this is the AMD Epic yeah, this, processor. This, right. This is the new AMD seven thousand two series of processor. And uh, some of its features are that it supports up to 64 cores in the single socket and up to 128 PCI Gen 4 lanes. PCI Gen 4 is really interesting here because it's twice the bandwidth of PCI Gen 3 that's already on the market. So significantly more lanes than we have in other systems. Right. And they're double the bandwidth. So there's a huge potential for I.O. capability. That's system, right. right? Mm -hmm. Now the server also has 16 DIMM slots. Um, with the 64 gig DIMMs installed, for example, that's up to a terabyte of RAM. Right. In a single and, socket system. Right. And these, these systems also support 3200 megahertz memory, which right. is faster than other memory that's in, in the market right. today. So the, the, the processor has eight memory channels, two DIMMs per channel. So if you're running uh, with, with just one DIMM, then the one DIMM per channel, mm -hmm. um, eight DIMMs total, then you can have up to memory speeds up to 3200 megahertz. That's right. With two DIMMs per channel, um, the systems, the, they drive at 2933. 33. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, the 3200 megahertz is a, is a step up from, from everything we have so far. So That's correct. Quite a substantial mm -hmm. difference, yeah. Right, so let me remove the, um, the air baffle there. I'll put that over there if I can, Russ. Yep. Okay, so that's the processor memory. Uh, let me draw your attention to the front of the system. Um, the drives, as usual, we have at the front. This system, as, as we'll show you, is unusual in that the drives are available, um, hot swap drives at the front, at the rear of the server and in the middle of the server as too. So quite substantial um, storage capability. This one here um, is, um, this one's the eight, two and a half, let's just spin it around a little bit. This is eight, uh, sorry, 10 two and a half inch drives. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the server supports a variety of configurations. At Rust, there's the uh, four three and a half inch drive. That's right, we have four three and a half. We have, eight. A, we have a 10 bay backplane, yep. yep. of which four are any bay, which means NVMe, SAS, or SATA, mm -hmm. and then we have an eight bay NVMe only backplane. Right, so a few choices there for the, for the front drive bays. Mm -hmm. um, uh, next to the drive bays, um, there's the uh, operator panel, uh, two USB 3.1, five gigabit per second uh, USB ports, um, usual um, operator controls, the power button and the LEDs and the ID button um, to identify the server in a rack. Um, uh, there on, on the side there. Um, there's a pull-out little uh, thing on, as usual on our servers, and that's where the um, network information will be um, for the onboard management controller. Um, and you can also add your own information there too if you if you have other information you want to store on the, uh, what, what, um, locally on the system. Um, 
So that's the front of the system. And let's spin it around and look at the back. Um, so the back of the system in this case um, has, um, and this, is, this one here, this is the OCP adapter. So I'll show you that first. This is a, a new design um, adapter, uh, industry standard OCP. Yeah, this is the OCP MES 3 design, right, which yeah. is uh, 16 lanes of PCI Gen 4, which, you know, over time is going to allow for uh, very high performance right. LAN cards to yeah, be so inserted to, right into the server. This one's a 20, uh, this is 25. To, it can support up to 25 gig mm -hmm. um, Ethernet um, right now. Um, it, you see, it's very easy to pull it. Just un un remove the, the thumb screw, and then it slides out. There's, there's. So this is this one. I think is the is a, um, a, a t uh, looks like a 10 gigabit um, uh, NG base T. Mm -hmm. Oh no, sorry, SFP. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. SFP, yeah. right? Yeah. Dual port. So and we'll be supporting up to four port cards uh, over time, yeah. and up to 100 gigabits over time as well. The server supports um, up to three um, external, externally accessible slots. Um, one here. Uh, and if I use this riser here, you can see there's two more here. So that's the back. In addition, there, uh, for, depending on the configuration, there is an internal slot, and there's the OCP as well. So a total of five um, PCIe connections are possible in terms of adapters. Three at three rear ex ex uh, accessible yeah, ones. Since this is only a single socket system, <clears throat> the motherboard turned out to be a little smaller than normal, and therefore we had room on the inside of the server. So. In this configuration, we have an internal slot. In this case, it's used for a RAID card uh, or other cards. <clears throat> and then here we have our uh, dual M.2 adapter for boot devices. Yeah, the M.2, this is a new design. I'll remove this to show you. Um, if you. If you recall on other Think System servers, we, the M.2 is a vertically mounted uh, de device with, with cards either side. In this design, we've put them uh, it, it, side by side um, and the, in the M.2 module. So this one has two M.2s installed. There's also an M.2 module available with just one slot if you, if you so right. desire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, I mean, there's additional cables that are, that are uh, attached to it. I've removed those just for the video. Um, underneath the M.2 is space for two super caps. So this is, the, I believe this is the RAID 930 uh, 16i. Mm -hmm. So the super cap that goes with that adapter um, is installed just there. Um, the space for additional ones if you need. I'll just leave that there. Yep. So now, in addition, uh, when I mentioned the the three possible <coughs> riser cards here, uh, uh, slots here. Um, on this server over here, we have instead of two of the slots, is we have uh, external um, rear drives. Um, so there are two, two two and a half inch hot swap drives. Um, in this case, these are two NVMe uh, connectors. There's also uh, um, SAS SATA drive bays as well. Um, and this configuration that allows one slot at the back in addition to the OCP. So if we have two drives here, and plus we have the potentially 10 drives at the front, uh, we already have a lot of drives, but you'll see that this particular server has additional drive bay um, in place of where the RAID card and the M.2 goes. This is a new design for our Think System servers where the, the drive bays are mounted in the middle of the server but they're still hot swap, hot swap and still accessible while the server is running. So you remove the cover and then you can just lever this up and there are four NVMe drives that can go just there. Right, so this server configuration has eight NVMe in the front, four in the middle, and then two more in the back. Right, so a total of 16, and those are no oversubscription either, right? That's correct. These are all direct connection mm -hmm. to, to the processor. As you can see, processor. here are the PCI connections from the processor yeah. to the various drive bays. And, and that's one of the big advantages, as I said at the beginning, this is one of the big advantages of the AMD um, EPIC 7002 series processors is significant amount of, of PCIe 4 lane capability. Mm -hmm. It allows you to have 16 direct connected uh, NVMe drives. That's right. In fact, on the two-year server, you could have even more. Yes. So there's a substantial amount of, of, uh, of bandwidth available there. Um, so that's those drives, and those once you finish servicing those drives, if you need to, you can then just lay layers back down again. Um, quite easy to get to. Yeah. Now um, the server has um, hot swap fans. That's seven, right. Uh, seven hot swap fans here. Um, these these can be removed while the the server is running. If, if one has failed, you'll get a notification through Systems Manager if, if you do have a fan failure. Very easy to to pull out and, and replace. Very simply. Yep. And last thing in the back. Uh, we should go through the uh, other components. Um, the the two power supplies. The, the server supports the 550 watt through to the 1100 watt. That's correct. Power mm -hmm. supply capabilities. 
you would choose power options depending on what, what your needs are for uh, what components are installed. Um, at the back of the server there is a serial port and VGA port, those are standard. The optional VGA in the front, so you have two capable mm -hmm. VGA ports if you need them. Um, there are also, there's the uh, Ethernet port for uh, systems management, remote access, and additional USB ports as well. Um, so the usual complement of ports at the back of the server. Right. Yep. So Russ, I think that's about it, right? Right, I think so. I think the key here, though, is this is really an evolution in server design. We're seeing the technology move to the point where a one-socket server can really do even more than what some two-socket servers can do. And so this is an advantage for customers in that, you know, they're, uh, they won't have as much power. You know, they may have uh, power limits in the rack, and these servers will consume less power but have more function. So therefore, you know, they can actually fill their racks with more servers. That's one advantage of a single-socket server. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, uh, there's, there's less cost involved, typically, with a one-socket server. As you can see, this motherboard doesn't have two sockets. It doesn't have the, the regulator for two sockets. It doesn't have all the memory dims for two sockets. But it still has more capability than what most customers really need. Yeah, yeah so it's a really great system mm -hmm. for, for a lot of workloads, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I would also add to us that we're in the briefing center filming this That's video. That's right. Um, this, this center is available for customers to learn about our products, right? That's right. We're here in Morrisville, North Carolina, and we invite you to get with your Lenovo rep or your Lenovo business partner and arrange a briefing here in the briefing center mm -hmm. where you can talk with all the experts here in Morrisville and learn about the entire product line. Yep, and we have our engineers in, in Building 7 just across the, mm -hmm. across the lake here, so it's a, a great trip to, the, to come and visit us. That's right. Yep. Well, there you go. So this is the new Think System SR635. Russ, thanks very much. Thank you for having me. Hope you found the video useful, and we'll see you later. Bye for now. <laughs>